Hello and welcome along to another edition of the Andrew Eborn Show. And I'm delighted that my very special guest today is a UFO expert, the wonderful Philip Mantle. How are you, Philip? Uh, good afternoon, Andrew. I'm fine, thank you. Here in uh, sunny Pontefract in West Yorkshire. Oh, we love Pontefract, famous for its cakes and many other things. Absolutely. So, so is that where you were, a man and boy in Pontefract? Well, not, not far from here. I was born in a very small place called East Ardsley, a little mining village just outside of Wakefield. So it's only about 10 miles away. So I've, I've not moved far from, uh, from my origins, Andrew. So always a joy. But I'll tell you what, the people up there seem to be so much friendlier than down here in the south, don't they? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so that's what yes, it's I, I had known the, trait of us northerners, as you oh, know. I love it. And I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, when I was a, a baby lawyer and I studied law, I went, I decided I wanted to go as far away from the south as possible. Because I assumed that I'd be spending a lot of my time in London, which actually happened to be true. So I went to study up in Durham. And I love my time in Durham. Yeah, well, the northeast is uh, especially friendly. And I, I think it's some kind of poll that did not long ago that when people phone up, they think the, the, the North East accent is one of the nicest kind of accents they want to listen to. Of course, it's not that long ago that if you couldn't get a broadcast position if you didn't speak uh, BBC English, which of course, I don't, I don't think anybody speaks apart from the Queen, you know? Ah, well, I, I, the Queen and Andrew Eborn, I think that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a joy. But I, I'm always interested, Philip, looking at uh, people's lives and the, the <coughs> path that they go on. And it was Socrates in between those football matches who said, show me a boy to the age of seven and I'll show you the man. So tell me, when did you first get interested in UFOs? Um, I was a teenager when I got interested in UFOs, but I'd been interested in what I'll, what I'll loosely call the paranormal as far back as I can remember. And, um, you know, my, my father died when I was two, so my mum remarried a few years later. Uh, and my stepfather, he's the man I call my dad, uh, he was a coal miner all his life, worked at the coal face, so, you know, we weren't very affluent, to say the least. My mum came from Northern Ireland, quite a rural part, so uh, she would no formal education either. But the one thing my mum always had around the house was books. You know, till the day she died, she was an avid reader of, you know, she liked the romantic fiction, but, you know, so we were always surrounded by, by books. And um, my mum told me the story that when she was young, living on the, the small hold, you know, I won't call it a farm, um, there wasn't a great deal to do because of the, the location. She used to play by herself down by the stream and she said she met a fairy. You know, a little fairy with the pretty wings. It was a, a lady fairy with the clothes and she conversed with it. Uh, and, you know, down the years, I would ask her if this was real. And she said, well, it was real to me, son. You know, and she told my children, her grandchildren's that. So maybe that's where it started, Andrew. I don't know. But um, I remember when I was about 13 or 14, my, my best friend's grandmother lived opposite. Oh, we seem to have lost you a little bit, Philip. I don't know the, uh, the connection is particularly bad, but just in case it is, we're going to take a little break and we're going to be back with Philip Mantle after these important messages.